Hi there, Mr. Holcomb here with another episode of The Math Behind the Modules. This is Module 3, Lesson 1. What lies behind same shape? So this exploratory challenge says two geometric figures are said to be similar if they have the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. It's using the information Using that informal definition, are the following pairs of figures similar to one another? Explain. Okay, so here we have a triangle, and then we have a larger triangle. This angle here appears to be the same as this angle here. These angles appear to be the same measure, and these angles appear to be the same measure. And if that is true, and this side is proportional to the other side, so I'm going into more detail here because this is an informal definition. So do they look like they have the same shape? And the answer to that question is yes. Yes, these figures appear to be similar. They are the same shape, but one is larger than the other or one is smaller than the other. Okay. All right. So moving along, that is all we're really doing is determining whether or not these look similar. Okay, so if this was, before I go any further, if this is triangle A and this is triangle B, then I would say triangle A is similar to triangle B. So what do we have here? We have an equal sign. That means that two things are equal. We now have this symbol here, which means similar. And then when we put the two together and put the similar symbol on top of the equal sign, that means congruent. Congruent and similar are a little bit different. They aren't quite the same thing. And all three of these things have a little bit of a difference to them. And I'll discuss those as we go. Okay, so but there's the symbol for similar. Okay, part B. Well, this looks like a square. 90 degree angles, 90 degree angles. But if I enlarge this thing a little bit, so if I copy this just real quickly here, if I copied this square and then moved it over here, well, I only need to enlarge it this little distance here. And if I enlarge it that far over here, then I would enlarge it that same distance up here. And it would be a larger square about this size. So obviously this and the original rectangle here are not similar. It would have to be more like another larger square. So I would say no. These are not similar because this is a square and that appears to be a rectangle. Part C, this is a five-sided figure or a pentagon. And this is a five-sided figure or a pentagon. It looks like they have just been rotated and translated and they look like they are congruent. So if something is congruent, then they are also similar. So that is yes. Okay, now this is a circle and this is a circle. And this is a unique um, shape in that if you have two circles, then they're always going to be similar because the only difference can be their radius and their circumference, basically. Radius, diameter, circumference. The shape does not change. If I change the shape of a circle, if I compress it some way, that is no longer a circle. That is called an ellipse. But if this appears to be a circle and this appears to be a circle, then they are similar. E. All right, here I have a shape that looks like an arrow, and this is another arrow, and yes, they do appear to be similar. If I rotated this around here and enlarged it, then they do look like they are about the same shape. So I would say, yes, this is similar. F, smiley face, smiley face. They're both circles with circles inside the circles, and then this arc of different sizes, they do appear to be similar. But if I look at this, like I was saying earlier, this is still a circle. This is now an ellipse. So these are not similar. Okay, and then this is an arc. And this is a broader arc. Okay, it's spread out. So if this point here coincides with this point here, I would have to draw a line of symmetry here. And the distance from here to here should be proportional to the distance from here to here. So are those two figures similar? Okay, I would definitely say no. This here looks like it's shortened. 
and these got larger. So I would say these are probably not similar. Okay, one, given the length of OP equals five inches, let's take line segment. If segment OP is dilated, dilated means to be increased or decreased like your pupils and your eyes dilate. They get bigger, they get smaller. A dilation is an increase or decrease in size. So if segment OP, that's five inches long, is dilated by a scale factor of R equals four, what is the length of segment OP prime? Okay, so I drew this line here. And if I put a point right here and called that O, and then I measure five inches, okay, I'm not gonna use inches here because I'll be off the page. Let's just mark this here as my five inch line. So this is P, okay? So if this point here is P, then this is five inches from O to P. Well, if I scale this up a factor of R equals four, then we're really, what we're doing is multiplying by four. So if I multiply five times four, I get 20. So I would be way out here, five, 10, 15, 20. I would have to actually extend that out even further somewhere over here, and I'd call that P prime. And that's why we're calling this O P prime, because the starting point's the same, O, and the end point is P prime, which is five times four, or 20 inches out here. So then to answer this question, I'd say O P prime, the length of O P prime equals five times four inches, which is equivalent to 20 inches. B, if segment O P is dilated by a scale factor of one half. Now remember when we were doing enlargements and scaling up and scaling down, this was in prior classes, um, meaning like, was it seventh grade or sixth grade? If the scale factor is greater than one, it's an enlargement. R4 is greater than one, this was an enlargement. If a scale factor is between zero and one, okay, so if I have zero, but it can't be equal to zero, greater than zero, my scale factor, but less than one, then it's a dilation and it's a it's a reduction it's smaller so if segment op is dilated by a scale factor of a half what is the length of segment op prime then i would say segment op prime equals five inches times the one half which is 2.5 inches Okay, so what we're really doing is scaling this down to here, and this would be my P prime for this problem here. Scaling it down a factor of one half, make this segment one half the length. Okay, use the diagram below to answer exercises two through six. Let there be a dilation from center O, so here's my center O, then dilation P equals P prime. So this P becomes out P prime out here. So I already know that my scale factor is greater than one because OP is now longer than it was. Now it's OP prime, which is way longer than three centimeters. And the dilation Q to Q prime is also greater than one. So it's an enlargement. And in the diagram below, OP equals three centimeters and OQ equals four centimeters. So number two says, if the scale factor is R equals three, what is the length of segment OP? Well, I would say the length of OP prime equals the length of OP, the length of OP times my R, which is three. So that would equal the length of OP, which is three centimeters times three, and that equals nine centimeters. So the length of OP prime is nine centimeters. So P to P prime is six plus three plus six is nine. Number three, use the definition of the dilation to show that your answer to exercise two is correct. 
Okay, so I got ahead of myself here. The definition of dilation really is what I showed in number two. So if I just brought this down here, that is answering this. If the scale factor is three, find the length of OP. It's just three times three or nine centimeters. Okay, here they were just asking what it was and number three is asking to show how you got that answer. Um, I probably would have just done it number three only because I recommend my students to show their work anyhow. Okay, so number four. Four says, if the scale factor is R equals three, what is the length of segment O Q prime? Well, if it's scale factor of R equals three, four times three is 12 centimeters. And then it now says, use the definition of dilation to show that your answer to exercise four is correct. So I would say the length of O Q prime equals the length of O Q times three, which equals, and I look up at OQ is four centimeters, four centimeters times three, and the answer is 12 centimeters. Number six says, if you know that OP, the length of OP equals three, and the length of OP prime equals nine, how could you use that information to, to determine the scale factor? Well, in order to determine the scale factor when you know both, all we have to do is say that R, okay, our scale factor R equals the length of our new segment, OP prime, divided by the length of our original segment, OP. So I could work backwards. So OP prime from here to OP prime was nine centimeters. We answered that in number two and three. OP prime is nine centimeters. So if I put nine centimeters in the numerator and then I look at the original OP, which is right here, that is three centimeters. So that would be nine centimeters divided by three centimeters and the centimeters cancel, and my scale factor is 9 divided by 3, which is simply 3. So R equals 3. Okay, that's a quick short lesson on dilation. That is the end of lesson 1. Review the lesson summary and go do your problem set.